On this episode, we chat with four different expat women about what it's like finding love and romance in Bangkok. So if you want to learn more about an often overlooked side of the dating game in Bangkok, you'll love this episode of the Bangkok Podcast. Sawadee crap. If you're hearing this, you're listening to the Bangkok Podcast. My name is Greg Jorgensen, a Canadian who came to Thailand in 2001 and promptly came very close to getting heat stroke on my second day in the country, which is a true story. And I met Knuth, an American who came to Thailand on a one-year teaching contract 18 years ago, fell in love with not understanding what anyone is saying around me, and I never left. (laughs) You fell in love with a negative. (laughs) No, it's great. It's just great not understanding what anyone is saying. Anyway, before we start, a huge thanks to all of our patrons who support the show. Uh, For more info on how you can become a patron, just head to the support page on BangkokPodcast.com. One of the cool things our patrons get is an unscripted, uncensored bonus episode every week where we talk about current events in Thailand and whatever else comes into our minds. We just finished recording this week's bonus show, uh, and Greg talked about a very embarrassing airport mistake that a long-term expat like him definitely should not have made. Yeah. Uh, after which, uh, Greg and I discussed the eternal question of living in Bangkok as a foreigner. Is ignorance actually bliss? Mm. We get both philosophical and practical. So check out the Patreon bonus episode. That's my middle name, philosophical and practical. That's right. It's a terrible middle name. All right. Hey, well, well before we jump into it, uh, we have to mention some podcast reviews. Uh, we don't get a lot of these, so when we, when they do come in, it's nice it's nice to uh, to acknowledge them. So, uh, G Mart sixty five from a little country called the United States of America, uh, he he wrote, "I've been working and traveling since my first visit in nineteen ninety five. These guys bring you a different side of things. The interview with the CEO of Hubba was fantastic, and I would love to see more like this with the next generation of Thai entrepreneurs. Keep up the great work." So thanks, G Mart. All right, thank you, G Mart sixty five. Maybe his name is uh, Greg Mart, and um, could be. And uh, and Lero Mango from the Philippines, he wrote, love this podcast. I don't live in Bangkok yet, though I wish I did. But even if I don't, they do paint a really clear picture of what the city is like and the pulse of everything that's happening. Their guests are amazing and their topics are always interesting. The more I listen to them makes me one step closer to packing my bags and just bolting to the city. Awesome stuff. Big fan. Woohoo. Holy crap. Greg, did you write that? Come on. It sounds like I Be did, serious. but I didn't know. That's pure 100% uncut Lero Mango. All right, Lero Mango. We might hire you to write our ad copy. I'm just going to hire him to follow me around all day. Be like, you're awesome. Every once in a while. <laughs> He's like, woohoo. <laughs> Greg rules. That'd be great. Like that. Lero Mango gets a thumbs up for me. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Both Lero Mango and Gmart. Thanks for the reviews. And anyone out there, if you want to leave a review, hey, we'd like to hear some feedback. All right, so on this episode is quite a unique one, and it's a topic that both Ed and I have been very interested in for a number of years, and something that doesn't get discussed too often, and that is the dating scene for expat women in Bangkok. Hold on a second. I think you got to emphasize that word women, the dating scene for expat women, because believe it or not, like expat women do exist. They live in Thailand, <laughs> and they do I know it's hard to believe. You don't hear about them very much. Um, And believe it or not, they actually do want to date. Yeah. Well, as most as most people know, there have been uh, billions of words spoken and written about what Bangkok is like for men in terms of love and sex. Spoiler, pretty good. But uh, since Ed and I (laughs) don't know Jack about the other side of things, we wanted to get some insight from these women. But we didn't want to have just one woman on to represent all women in Bangkok. So we decided to do something different. And we did this interview round table style. So we were lucky to meet four fantastic women, Laura, Maggie, Carrie, and Kat, who sat down with Ed and I to discuss dating horror stories, insights into relationships with Thai men and women, uh, advice for expat women who are new to Bangkok, and much, much more. Um, we ended up talking for actually nearly two hours, although we, we cut that down a little bit. So this show will be part one of a two-part series, and you can hear part two next week. Uh, suffice it to say, we owe a lot to these four incredible women, Laura, Maggie, Carrie, and Kat. So 
we're going to say thank you many times. Uh, we really appreciate uh, you guys uh, uh, coming out. We recorded this uh, kind of on a Sunday morning, uh, and it was uh, logistically a little bit difficult. So they took a big chunk out of their day, and uh, they didn't really have to do it, and they didn't really get anything for doing it except uh, like our thanks. Uh, so uh, listeners, I hope you guys appreciate what we put together here. We have uh, four very different, very interesting, very insightful uh, expat women telling us what it's like to date in the land of smiles. Yeah, and it's important too. Like, I, this is funny. I'm, I'm probably t- talking too much here in the introduction, but I, I want it, this is important to say. As we were editing the show, we were like, "Man, it's just it just seems like while these women aren't negative people, we were discussing a lot of negative things." And we should say off the top that um, all of all of the women that joined us are not negative people. They have they're great, friendly, cool, smart, funny people, and they have, from what I could tell, are very rewarding, interesting lives. Although we do talk about a lot of negative stuff, one thing to remember is that these four women have all stayed in Thailand. And while some women leave and don't like it, obviously these four women have figured out a way to be happy here one way or the other. Right, right. Uh, so they, they are living proof that expat women can survive and thrive in Thailand. Yeah, yeah, very well put. All that said, Bangkok is still a playground for men, so it is challenging being an expat woman here. So that's what we wanted to hear about. All right, let's hear about it. So without further ado, here is a conversation that Ed and I had with Laura, Maggie, Carrie, and Kat. All right, everyone. Well, welcome uh, to this episode of the Bangkok Podcast. Now, we're going to try something very interesting here. We've never done this before. Usually when we do interviews with people, it's it's one-on-one. Very rarely it's uh, with two guests. But today we've got four guests this is a topic that Ed and I, uh, and Evo and Tony too, going way back to season one, have been very interested in for a long, long time. And that is the dating life of expat women in Bangkok. And I think it's, it's pretty fair to say, and I don't think anyone would disagree, that Bangkok is known as kind of a, 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 a straight expat man's city slash playground, depending on the man. <laughs> um, but I think there's not a lot said often enough about what it's like for expat women. So to do that, we are very uh, happy to have four expat women join us on the show here. So there's me and Ed and four guests, and one of them brought her very lovely daughter over there, but she's not going to be contacting, uh, commenting because she's way too young to be talking about this. <clears throat> uh, let's, let's just, uh, first of all, thank you guys. Welcome to the show, and very, thank you very much for coming down. We really appreciate it. So let's just start with uh, going around the table and giving a quick introduction, how long you've been here and what your story is. So my name is Laura Takenaka. Uh, I've been in Bangkok for seven years. Um, I am a single mom, uh, and I am currently on the board of directors of a blockchain company. So um, I'm going to reveal my age, and that's even scarier. I'm 41. I just recently turned 41, and I'm actually twice divorced, so this is even more fun. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, I'm Maggie. I've been here... Apparently nine years. Apparently my math's not really well and that great. I'm a teacher, kindergarten and photography, and been here a while and dated a few people. And so that's why I'm here. And you're from South Africa? Oh, and I'm from South Africa, yes. Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Kat. Um, I don't know if I should share my age, but I'm tw- turning 29 this month. Um, I've been in Thailand about 10 years now. Um, and I'm a photographer and I've dated in that 10 years that I've been here and I've dated both foreign and Thai and men and women. So a lot of different perspectives about dating in Thailand. Hello, I'm Carrie. I've been here almost five years. Um, I figured I would be the oldest one here and I was right. Ah. (laughs) (laughs) I turned 43 tomorrow. And um, yeah, I've since I've been here in Bangkok, I've dated. Um, I have not dated from men here, but I've dated a few Thais. Um, I've dated a few from men from other countries, so a bit of like long distance kind of thing. But um, yeah, that's interesting too. And where are you from? I'm from California. So this uh, this uh, issue is something that I'm fascinated by because I've been here 
as listeners know, for about 18 years. And when I first got here, I had a bunch of uh, Farong friends, American guys, and it, it was kind of like a playground. Like it, it was it was pretty incredible, fun, exciting. But I also had friends I worked with, uh, American women I worked with. And right away, I think within the first couple of months, I, I, it was just obvious that it was not the playground for them that it was for like me and my buddies. Way, this is way back in 2000, 2001, that I used to be hanging out with my American women friends and hear their stories and hear their laments and hear their complaints. And so this is just this super old issue. And uh, it's just funny. It never happened. But my buddy and I, uh, who it was interested in filmmaking, we actually, for about six months, we worked on this documentary film project. And it was going to be all about expat women in Thailand. And, you know, this is probably about 15 years ago. We were like, someone needs to make a movie about this because I, it is, I, I feel like expat women, they're forgotten. <laughs> like you're like an overlooked group, I think. But I'm kind of curious, just specifically the differences you experience dating in your home country versus here. So maybe we'll start with that and we'll go one by one again. So like what was the, what's the key difference? Like, so you, you obviously are a little bit older, so that means you dated some in your home country, and then you came here. I want to hear like your kind of initial impressions and what it was like the first year or two. Um, I think for me, I feel that because like you guys have mentioned, it is a playground for expat guys here. So they take on that mentality that, oh, it's not serious. If it doesn't work out with her, I have tons of other women available to me at a flip of a you know phone screen. And so I, I think that they don't take uh, expat women very seriously. And I think that they have more fun, actually. So do you feel like there are men to date, but fewer men who want something serious? Well, for me, I feel like they, they don't want to put in the effort to make it out to be something because they have women literally throwing themselves <laughs> at them. Do you know what I mean? Like uh, vaguely, yeah. <laughs> I guess so, a caveat, not every guy has women. Yeah, I'm not saying out. every guy, but I'm just saying like like if I put myself if I was a man here, if I was an expat man and I walk out in the streets and there's all these women that are like fawning over me, that's making me feel like I'm God's gift to women. I'm not likely to put in the effort to with an expat woman because expat women, I think, expect more, expect more effort, time resources, you know, to to like take us out. And, you know, I mean basic stuff that we get back in the states right but here it's like if i was a guy i'm like well why am i going to do all of that you know i can just walk out to nana or i can walk out to soy cowboy and like <laughs> you know i mean it sounds very stereotypical but i think that's the case stereotypes are based on some some shred <laughs> <of facts. laughs> yeah a lot of truth i think so basically yeah. your your experience kind of backs up the the yes that's what i want to hear i'm curious yeah i think for me it's a kind of a slightly different experience because i moved here and i went to university here so i was dating in my early 20s so my and then i didn't really speak thai so i think it's a strange thing to reflect back on my dating history and my thailand career um here having dated people from other countries or like gone on dates with people from other countries and then as my Thai improved, going on dates with Thai men. Um, I don't know, before that, dating in the States, I left when I was 19, so it's kind of hard to say that I had that much experience dating in the States, but I have gone back to visit for extended periods of time, and I would just say that the how aggressive American men are compared to what I've seen here and like how expressive American men can be in like their interest in you like send nudes like okay <laughs> thanks I never mind hard pass swipe left um so you're saying back in the states American men are more aggressive or you mean the American men here are more aggressive American men in the states I mean they might as they might be just as aggressive in Thailand but maybe they have another outlet for that um and they're like when they're pursuing you so I think dating in the states is somewhat a little bit easier because it's you're actually getting chased after. I mean, I don't like that kind of terminology. I don't really like to use, but I guess there's a clear expression of interest versus here. If someone's interested in you or 
they don't show it at all or they're not they're not even interested and, and, and is that expat men as well as Thai men um i mean it varies case to case because i think i found in my experience it's a little bit like since i can speak thai so it just depends on the person that i'm but I, in general i think american men in the states it's been easier because it's it's like okay i want to date you i want to like i'm interested in getting to know you versus here it's like i don't what are you i don't understand what are you interested in or there's no clear expression well of it. that kind of makes sense based on what carrie said too because back in canada like women were not throwing themselves at me <laughs> and you know and not like they are here I don't know the word before I was married, but um, like like you said, like you have to work at it back home. Here it is much easier. So you just sort of, you know, slide into a casual thing or a relationship or whatever. But back back home, it's like, man, I got to be on my best behavior. I got to put my best foot forward if I want to impress this girl because you know there's a ton of other guys competing for you know the same okay. attention. So I, I I can see that. Yeah. Okay. So this is Maggie. I have a bit of a different side of it as I came here with. A person I was dating, uh, we moved to Thailand together, and we were together here for three years, almost three and a half years, I think. Yeah, so I saw Thailand's dating from a different side where I wasn't involved, but I had a lot of friends who were saying that, like, oh, dating sucks here, you won't understand, you have a boyfriend. And then I also saw my Thai friends, because I used to live out in Lot Pra, which at that time I would go to Tesco and like kids would hide from me because like they haven't like seen foreigners like ever. So that was interesting as well, like seeing how the Thai culture, how they were dating. Like I would be sitting somewhere and then somebody would be there with their girlfriend and then the next night they would be there with another girl, which I then learned was a gig. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. But then the next night I would see the other girl and I would be like, how can I be friends with these people and not tell them this? Like, it's way too weird for me. Then we, me and my ex broke up. Uh, still a really good friends, great guy. Dated for a little bit, had another serious relationship for about six months and then went down the rabbit hole of trying to start <laughs> dating in um, so Bangkok. I'm curious, when you when you started dating, were you specifically looking for like foreign men, Thai men, or was it just whoever? Like what what were you looking for? Um, so I'm pretty tall <laughs> and Thai men don't approach me because okay. I'm much bigger than most of them here. I mean, in recent years I've really noticed how men have like taller Thai guys are all around. I'm like, wow, like, are you, really? like, is the NBA of Thailand starting really? or what's going on? The diet's changing or something. Really. I think, yeah, the, and the influence of the expat blood also may be coming in and <laughs> things like that. Yeah, but so I didn't really get approached by Thai men. And in South Africa, it was also a lot different where you would have to work at it. You would have to pursue a girl and woo her and like, actually try so where in, so in south africa you were you were used to being chased for lack of a better term or you were used to getting more attention yeah i wouldn't say i was chased that much but um in south africa it's definitely different than here whereas i've gone on two dates with two different thai guys which was odd for me because i've not ever really had the opportunity and one of them actually just approached me really abruptly and I was like wow I was very very much like what's <laughs> going on like so I was like rushing to meet my friend and he like was walking really fast next to me and I was like okay this is weird because I've got long legs so I'm like oh, this is interesting and I'm like okay Poor little dude jogging next to you. <laughs> and then he literally like swerved in front of me and he was like hi I was like hello and I was very, very confused as to what was going on. And I think I was so shocked that I, like, can I help you? And he was very much just like, I saw you and then, and, and can I have your number? And I was like, but I'm late. And I just did not think about it and gave him my number and like ran. And then as I got to the bar meeting my friend, I was like, 
I think I just gave my number to a Thai guy. <laughs> so that just happened. Okay, so this is Laura. I, I've got an even different, more different story. Uh, I came here with my ex-husband. So it was the, the classic trailing spouse stuff. Didn't know that much about Thailand when I came, and, but we came from Japan. So that's even more kind of a dating wasteland for <laughs> for, <laughs> for um, expat women. I, was I guess your, we call them Was your expat. husband Japanese? Japanese, oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, so my husband's Japanese. So do you, you want to talk about difficult dating? Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, and it just, it goes into a very creepy place where like, hey, I want to buy your clothes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Really? I wanted, I got approached once on, there's this um, social site only in Japan. It was called Mixi. You could only get there if you were invited by a person who was already in there. So I just put my profile up once and it was more to talk to my friends, but I had all these weird men from Tokyo and I wasn't in Tokyo, I was in Hokkaido, um, say, asking me to come to Tokyo because they want to buy me clothes. And I was like, okay, what? I, I don't understand this. So, but I think to them, that was the way you ask somebody to be your girlfriend is to like buy them accessories and clothes. And that's what Japanese women were looking for. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. Like there's a whole, you know, subculture of dating, um, Enjo Kosai and stuff like that, where you um, pay to go on dates with women. You pay them to walk with you. You pay them to eat with you. And it's, it's just a whole cultural thing. So coming here, um, obviously I was married. I didn't last very long, um, a couple years here, a couple years here. And, um, unfortunately we divorced here. Um, so I became a single mom here. So we kind of became like this little girl squad here and I made the mistake actually. And this is even more embarrassing if friends of mine are, are listening to this and you know, they are, um, <laughs> I joined Tinder and that was possibly like, it felt like the lowest part point of my life. So I'm like, I'm how old now? And I'm on this. And it was just, uh, it's just Bob's and Vagine, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. show me Bob, show me Vagine. I'm like, okay, bye. No. Okay, bye. No. And then you notice all the men your age are obviously looking for women who are 10 to 20 years younger than them. Even, I mean, it just, it just hits all the stereotype points you know on the nose and then trying to just find somebody mature enough you know i i can take a joke i can throw a joke and i'm immature as well but somebody mature enough to, to not freak out the, about the fact that you have a kid you know and i've heard so many men like because i'm friends I'm, I'm friends with a lot of men so um even though i'm friends with them like they'll still say the stuff that kind of like, you know, if we were back in the West, you would not say that to my face where, oh, yeah. where, you know, they're, they're kind of like, well, no, I would never date anybody with a kid. Why would you want somebody with baggage or, or, you know, raising another man's wow. child or things like that. But th these are things that are, that they really feel. And I think they feel more emboldened to just kind of come out with sure, them here. Sure. Um, I joined a, uh, a running club. So that was kind of like, this is the way to meet people to join sports clubs or something like that. And at the time I was kind of like, yeah, maybe it's time to get into another relationship. And that flamed out pretty spectacularly as well. <laughs> but it went, it went in the opposite direction. He was too serious, too fast. And he wasn't Thai, but he was Vietnamese French. So I just focus now on my career and raising my kid, honestly, I finished my master's, get my career going and, and raise my kid but uh, then you get into the head of well this is not a good example for her either to be <laughs> to be you know an island and not get back into it but i think where i am right now it's just better a lot, a lot of guys i know here including myself have had expat friends and after three four five years of sort of living in this dating wasteland they leave thailand and they're very bitter and angry and feel maybe like they're not good enough or whatever. Um, is that, is that something that you see as a, as a general danger or eventuality, or is that very much dependent on each individual person? Um, this is Kat and I'll like jump in and just say, yes, I've seen friends that have left Thailand for that reason. They like get dumped by someone or they lose hope and they're like, Thailand is not the place to date. I'm out of here. They feel like they, they have little hope Yes, absolutely. And I guess, I mean, I, you know, you go through phases if you've been 
single for a long enough time you go through phases and i feel like i've been through phases like that where i'm like yeah i'm in the game i got this i would have find and date someone and then you're, oh never mind <laughs> <laughs> and then you just stop dating for a while and then you get you know it's like months or like a year will pass and you're like okay i'm gonna try again but i think for my friends that have tried to date and get back into it and then they just feel like maybe it's a number of other things their job isn't going well uh, the pressures of trying to be a digital nomad or a teacher here isn't working out. And that's the last final straw for them where they're just like, okay, never mind. This is not worth it. I'm out of here. This is Maggie. I feel like I've had the similar, lots of people coming and going, obviously transient, but especially women where it's like meeting women that's been here for longer than four years or so. I was very lucky the first four years that I was here that like I had the core group of four girls that we were all here and we would see each other every Thursday night at least and um, <clears throat> just like seeing lots of other girls come and go really quickly just being like some of them six months where they were like no I can't do this this is horrible like I can't have a personal life like job's great but I can't date here I can't have anything else and then other girls who were fine with it but also we were just like I don't see a future of meeting someone here. And I have friends who literally after three months being back home, wherever they're from, being engaged. Like, or like things like that. And it's just like, ooh, okay. Getting married, getting married. It's like Facebook, Facebook. Oh, yeah, great. So many engagements going on. Like, and I don't know about you guys, but like a lot of people who like say, oh, you go home for the holiday or whatever, and you're going to feel great. You're going to feel so attractive. It's going to be awesome. I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Yeah. That's very true. Can I jump in? Sorry, it's Laura. I, the, um, the amount of women I've seen angry, angry, like people who you wouldn't expect to be angry and bitter get really angry and really bitter and it's it's kind of shocking i mean i haven't gone that way but i know people who have but yeah going home for like a month i haven't been home and going on three years now so um you do go home and then it's i mean you see people you went to high school with and like yeah that's not what i want at all either <laughs> like ooh, no thank you but then just people you knew were like oh wow you're really different like well yeah obviously i mean yeah. we're all different but you do feel so so different and people approach you and people talk to you and then i find myself going yeah, why? what's happening why are you talking to me what's that like what why why are you so close what what are you doing <laughs> Like, do I have something? What's on my face? Like, what what is on my face? Why are you talking to me in public? But that's just what happens. So, but but the bitterness and the anger, I find some women go that way. Yeah, it might I, not be the way to go, but some some do. My experience was with a, a very good friend of mine, and her name is Penny. I can say her name because we had a falling out. We don't talk anymore. It's completely unrelated to this issue, but but um, she she was over here for a few years, and then I was here. And um, I remember coming home one night to her, and I was at an internet cafe. This was back in like 2002, and I was at an internet cafe, and uh, this Thai woman next to me started talking and asking me questions. And she was an older woman. I think she was probably trying to scam me. I didn't know any better at the, at the time. But I came home and I said to Penny, like, "Oh yeah, this this woman started talking to me in the, in the internet cafe, and she got really angry at me." And she was like, oh, God damn, man, like you have it so easy. You don't even know. And I was like, I didn't know anything about what we're talking about. I had no preparation for like what was going on there behind the scenes. But I was like really unprepared. And um, she, she was like angry at me. And I'm like, I was just sitting there. She started talking to me. Don't get mad at me. But I'm sure there was all kinds of subtext and nuance within that re reaction that I didn't understand. And maybe I still don't understand. But um, she was really, really pretty, really beautiful. And uh, she had one boyfriend in six years in Thailand. And when she left, she was really angry and bitter and, and just didn't want anything to do with Thailand or the people here. And uh, it was really, really shocked to me how quickly she went from being like fun and cool and outgoing to like angry and just pissed off at everyone. I've got a question just out of curiosity. Do you have any friends? So not just someone you've heard about, but any friends who are in successful relationships with Thai men? One of my best, oh, this is Maggie. One of my best friends is married to a Thai guy. Uh, they're going on, I think, second year um, anniversary for the wed like wedding anniversary, but they were 
together for two years before that. So you know. So one. I I know one. Uh, this is Carrie here. Yes, I do. Um, they they're actually back in her home country. She's from Sweden. Um, so they kind of go back and forth between Sweden and Thailand, and they seem pretty happy. They have a, a daughter together. Yeah. So it is possible. It is possible. It's out there, believe I, it or not. I've been trying to find uh, an expat woman who's married to a Thai man to come on the show, and I've asked, I've asked a few, but um, a lot of people don't want to come on the show. This is Laura. I know one, too, with two kids. Okay. Um, Let's talk. Happily married, two kids, yeah. um, Thai woman. I know a lot more expat men married to Thai women rather than expat women married to Thai men, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> no one wants to hear about no, that. No, nobody cares about them, but <laughs> but they but they are happy. Yeah, and I also think they also don't fit the stereotype of oh, I went out and I took her, I took her from Isan, and you know, right. <laughs> my bar girl is different type stereotype that goes on there. They're just normal people who are married, which I think actually for men is a good stereotype to fight against as well. You're not, you haven't drugged them out of the. You know, haven't, right, right. haven't done the white savior thing where you've lifted them out of poverty and taken them from Isan type stuff, which is another stereotype, which I think is unfair. Yeah, it is unfair, unfair as well my, to a lot of... My, my wife and I walk through Exa- Nana or happen to be in close to an area. One time we got in the back of a taxi and the guy said, which hotel do you want to go to? And she <gasps> nearly kicked the shit out of this guy. Like she yeah. was so mad. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's fair to the Thai women who are married to, to foreign men. No, it's not, it's not fair, but it's, it's, it's just buying into a stereotype. It is, it's, it's, it's buying into a stereotype, which I think is starting to at least break down a little bit, but still, it, we're still really? a little bit. A little okay. bit, bit by bit, but not completely. I get stereotyped as, oh, Russian prostitute. I got that once. L- like, somebody asked me on the train at, like, 3.30. This is just after I taught. I teach kindergarten. I'm appropriately dressed. Afterwards, I was like, did I do something to make this person think I'm like in that? But he literally just came up to me, and he, without missing a beat just was like how much and i was like what excuse me and there was this farang guy standing behind me and i was like excuse me what did you just say to me and he was like how much and this guy behind me bless him don't know him whatever he was like excuse me what did you just say to my girlfriend and then i went what the fuck (laughs) i was like i was like thank you very much but you Like, I was just so upset. And then there was this Thai lady that was sitting down and she was, like, asking what was happening. And her Thai uh, daughter, like, explained to her that, like, because it became a scene on the the BTS. And, like, the old lady actually stood up and was like, what the hell is wrong with you kind of thing? And that that was a nice experience in Thailand where I was like, wow, it's really cool, like, community like standing up for you and things like that especially like in bangkok where i don't feel that happens a lot uh like in lot prowl that was a big thing for me i miss the community i like here i don't see my neighbors ever Uh, i don't know who lives right next door to me there i lived in a thai house and like my security guards basically were like if a gate closed four grandmothers like poke out their head (laughs) and like everybody knows your business um but that was nice yeah, so there are lots of stereotypes of that. And that's not the first time it happened. I went on a um, girls' weekend to Pattaya with a friend of mine for her bachelorette party. And that's not what Pattaya is really known for, not for bachelorette parties. So we walked down, and I like all of my friends that I'm there with, um, a walking street, um, they're all in relationships for a long time. And they have, like, they always go, you have the weirdest stories and then and, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. And they, somebody just thought I was a prostitute. They were like, no, that doesn't happen. <laughs> that doesn't happen. And I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. It doesn't happen in your world, but it does <laughs> unfortunately in mine. And so we were there and literally within seconds of walking onto walking street, two guys approached me and we were like, how much? I was just like, mm-hmm. And I kept walking and the four of them stood still. Shocked. Shocked. And I was like, 
Oi, keep moving. Like, <laughs> this is not now. They're going to approach you. Move. In my wildest, <laughs> most inappropriate dreams, I cannot imagine ever saying that to but, someone. So, like, this has happened on several occasions where, like, you were saying, like, you would never in your right mind even think of saying that to a girl back home or wherever you're from. Oh, my God, no, yeah. And here it's just like, oh, okay. Carrie, I got, I got a question for you. And this is uh, a little bit hard to talk about, but I, I, I'm kind of curious, uh, just to clarify what's going on here. Carrie is Asian. Well, I don't know what your background actually is. Uh, Vietnamese. Okay, like so, v- Vietnamese American. Then? Yes. Okay, so you you're Asian or you're Asian looking. Yes. So do do you think Thai men treat you differently than uh, white white women? Well, see, I was going. Uh, this is Carrie. I was going to jump in and talk about you know the whole stereotypes about bar girls you know walking with a foreign guy right so yes I get that a lot here because I look absolutely Thai and whenever I'm with my even my um because I'm a teacher and with my colleagues with my co-workers they're white and so when I'm walking with them or I'm eating at a restaurant like I, I would get inquisitive looks you know kind of like they think I'm like a I mean, I'm not dressed like a, a working girl or anything, but they think that I'm the quintessential Thai girl with the Falang guy, you know, trying to, I right, don't know, right. hope that he's going to lift me out of poverty or something, you know? You're so like, I, I scored, I got one. Exactly, you know? exactly. And, and there were even times when I'm in, I'm sitting in a restaurant with my, with my white guy friend and I would get dirty looks from other Thai women kind of like oh she got the guy that i wanted or like as if like i somehow made it you know right. <laughs> and i'm like uh and 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 i know that that's what they're thinking when they look at me and i'm just like dude this guy is my co-worker he's my friend you know it has nothing i'm not with him and you wow. know and i'm not trying to steal your guy or anything but do thai guys ever wa- walk up to you and start talking in thai they they're quite shy. They're quite. The, I find that the, the Thai guys are quite shy, but I get approached a lot by Thai guys online. Like on, um, I use WeChat, and they approach me there. And then, um, and I, I, I attempted to date a few Thai guys, and that was a disaster. Never again. So I'm why, sorry so to why, say. So I want to know why. Why? Why was it a disaster? They do. I think they do see me not as the same as they would uh you guys because they look at me you know they know that i'm not thai but i'm still asian to them you know and and so it's um i'll give you one example so i started to get to know this thai guy and you know he's he asked me out on a date and um he invited me to his hometown and and I'm thinking the whole time he never explained to me, like he, he always said, he, he said, Oh, you know, come down to my hometowns. Uh, you get to meet my parents. And I'm like, Whoa, that's pretty. We've known each other for like a month. And he's like, Oh yeah, meet my parents and everything. And I'm like, that's pretty serious. But he was like, No, 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 you know, like, uh, my parents are cool. They'll be okay with that. And, and he's like planning all these like, uh, different things that he's going to take me to. And I'm thinking it's going to be me and him. But the whole time it was with his entire family. We were never alone. And, and, and no matter where we went, there was always his family there. In a way, he was being more serious or more formal than you wanted. No, but that's the thing. He, I don't think he liked me as, as like a girlfriend. That or he, that he wanted to date me, but I was so confused. Yeah, it was. I, I, I think that's maybe a, a, a Thai thing, and I don't know if this is an exact parallel. But when the first date I ever went on with a Thai woman, when I first got here, she brought two of her friends. Uh-huh. I was like, "What the hell's going that, on?" That's yeah. happened to me before too. It's so strange. Yeah, like you. you yeah, you, you ask a girl out on a date, a proper date, <laughs> and she brings a friend with her. I'm like, I showed up. I'm like, <laughs> it is. I think it is a security thing. It totally, it's totally a security thing. And, <laughs> but why would but why would a guy have his family the the whole time? The whole time. We were never ever alone. That's we were weird. never alone. And like he took me to a different um to a different province and his cousins came with us and then we got um he he got <laughs> he, got, he and check this out, he got me my own hotel room. 
when he slept with his cousins. Romantic. <laughs> <laughs> and wow. yeah, and it was hilarious because in his cousin's hotel room, there was only two pillows and he was the third person. So he came to my room and he said, oh, I'm sorry, we can't sleep together because we're not married. But can I get a pillow? <laughs> <laughs> You would have been like, no pillow, <laughs> Well, listeners, I hope uh, that wasn't too chaotic. Uh, Greg and I are kind of new to the panel discussion format. Uh, I think it came across okay. We've got a, uh, that's just the first half. We've got another half coming up next week. Uh, and it gets, uh, I would say, even more interesting. Yeah. So tune in uh, to hear more adventures uh, from Laura, Maggie, Carrie, and Kat. Yeah. And let me say, for anyone out there recording roundtable interviews, I, I understand the pain. That was a nightmare to edit because we had, we had how many mics? We had four mics for six people, and it was, uh, it was challenging to put it, put it mildly. But great, yes. great interview, and we really, really enjoyed talking with them. Come back next week, and you'll hear some even more interesting stories and insights from these women. All right, let's get into some love, loathe, or live with, where one of us surprises the other with a particular aspect of living in Bangkok, which we then discuss and decide if it's something we love about living here, loathe about living here, or have come to accept as just part of the crazy tapestry of Bangkok. And this week, it's my turn. So Ed, I'm going to describe a situation for you, and uh, I want you to let me know what you think. You're walking down the street, down the sidewalk maybe, and uh, you're looking at your phone or not paying attention, and just in time, you notice that there is a huge hole in the pavement. But have no fear, someone has taken a stick and put an empty Red Bull bottle on top to warn people <laughs> that it is a danger. <laughs> and I think it's hard, like, is it, it's, it's hard to sort of equate this with love, loathe, or, 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 or live with, but is it something that you think is sort of quirky and does the job? Is it something that you think is awful and not safe? Or is it something that you go like, eh, what are you going to do? <laughs> Um, God, in a way, there is some charm to it, um, <laughs> there is. you know, but, you know, uh, the side, you know, we could do, we could do, you could write, you could make a whole documentary on sidewalk culture of Thailand. You know, I mean, I'm sure you've seen those photos of actual weird construction, like right in the middle of the sidewalk, Yeah, you know, where there's like, you know, where there's like a pole or something where they actually build into the middle of the sidewalk. Or there was the recent story where the city decided to tear up the beautiful sidewalk in front of the Marriott. Oh, you see that the was story? ridiculous. Yeah. What a nice stretch of sidewalk that was. Yeah. There was like a nice proper, I don't even know what type of stone it was in front of the Marriott. And they decided to like tear it up and put in like the crappy normal Bangkok sidewalk. <laughs> so it's like, so it's like the number of bad decisions made when it comes to Thai sidewalks is, 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 is legion. Uh, <laughs> So, so, so I know exactly what you're talking about with like, you know, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of a, God, God, I don't even know. I can't remember what the movie was, but it, back in the day I saw some movie and it was about guys in college who shared a house. Yeah. And there was, there was a scene in there where, you know, the, the house they lived in was a total chaotic mess and they had a party and there was like broken glass in the middle of the floor. <laughs> okay. Okay. And instead of like, picking it up one of the guys took a piece of paper and, and wrote broken glass on it and put it down on top of the broken <laughs> glass <laughs> so instead of just cleaning it up he just put a little sign broken glass <laughs> uh, you know so it's like that's what this reminds me of it's like instead of patching over the hole or putting some putting a board on it it's like someone just puts a stick there <laughs> you know, with like with like with with a, with something like a Red Bull can, yeah, uh, yeah. This is a. I, I guess it's got to be a live with. I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. I guess yeah. it's better than nothing. Yeah, it's better I, than I, nothing. I, I, I agree. I think it's live with, but I'm I'm just barely coming out of loathe. Like I think it's it's just it just shows a real lack of awareness. It just shows a real laziness to fix things properly. And but it it is charmingly goofy. So I, I'd yeah. say I'd live with, live with that one, yeah. This is just not a good walking city. No. Like, I wish it was, but it's not. I mean, this city is an ankle breaker, man. It's like between the construction and the, the, like the, the curbs and just the random holes. It's, it's an ankle breaker. Yeah, totally. All right. Okay. 
Uh, before we wrap up, I'd like to give a special thanks to all of our lovely patrons. As you know, we don't run ads or have sponsors, so we really, really do appreciate the support we get from our patrons. If you want to learn more, just head to BangkokPodcast.com forward slash support. And if you want to get in touch with us, it's easy. Bangkok Podcast on social media, BangkokPodcast.com on the web, or simply Bangkok Podcast at gmail.com. We are very polite, and if you write, we will answer. Yeah, you can also find each episode on YouTube, and you can also follow us online where we post each episode and carry on conversations with our listeners. You can also reach out to me directly on Twitter where I am BKK Gray. So thanks for listening, everyone, and we'll see you back here next week. On this episode, we discuss how or if, hang on, that doesn't make any sense.